Okay, so um, today I don't have it on the computer because of load shedding. So I'm just going to, uh, I won't be able to share any visual thing. I hope you can hear me properly. Um, we'll just we'll just go through the ideas without the without the presentation. So yesterday we spoke about the mizbeach. So I want to go a little bit further into the concept of the mizbeach. First of all, with regards to the mizbeach, as we mentioned, there's an interesting point, and that is the fact that the mizbeach of the Mishkan was one type. It was wood, which was copper plated. The Mizbeach of the first Beis Hamikdash was made out of stone. It was a lot bigger than the uh, Mizbeach of the Mishkan. And it was, instead of five Amis by five Amis, the height was the same, but it was this time the entire width and length was 28 Amis by 28 Amis. The Mizbeach of the second Beis Hamikdash, when they came back to build the second Beis Hamikdash, the, there was three Nevi'im, as we learned, three prophets that came with them from Galus, and the Nevi'im, one of them told them the exact place of the Mizbeach, the other one told them the dimensions of the Mizbeach. The dimensions of the Mizbeach meant that they added another four Amma, like an L, they added four Amma on the east, four Amma, four, Amma, four Ammas on the north, and four Ammas on the west. As a result of that, now they were able to make the kronos, the protruding horns, they were able to make them hollow, and now they can pour the wine and the water that's poured on sukkahs, on water and the rest of the time and wine, they can pour it into the Mizbeach itself. Now, the side of the Mizbeach, which is one of the most important parts of the Mizbeach, the necessary thing is the foundation, meaning the protruding Amma on the bottom, only protrudes on the entire west side and the entire north side. Once it goes to the northeast corner, it goes in one extra amma. And then the entire east side, there's no east side. The same thing is with the south side, which is actually part of it is under the ramp, that only on the southwest corner there's a east side, the rest of it doesn't have a east side. That's the way it was with the east side. Why was it like this? So as we mentioned, Eretz Yisrael was split up amongst the different tribes, amongst the different Shvatim. The portion where the Beis Hamikdash was belonged to Yehuda. Now there came in a strip from Binyamin, from the portion of Binyamin, and on this strip is where the Mizbeach was built. On the east side and on the south side, Already the part of Yehuda came and the Mizbeach couldn't be built in the portion of Yehuda. Why is that? Because when Yaakov Avinu, when he blessed Binyamin, he said, Binyamin ze'ev yitra. Binyamin is like a wolf that grabs. What is Binyamin grab? The Karbanis, and therefore the Karbanis, which are brought on the Mizbeach, could not be brought in the portion of Yehuda. They had to be brought in the portion of Binyamin. Yeah, very interesting, a very nice story. But why? What does this all mean? And plus, for those who are holding, for those who are a little more uh, engineers or mathematical, you'll figure out that there's an issue over here. Because if we added an L, so where did we add the L? So the truth is the L was added on the part where there was, where there was a Yisait. So over here, there was able to be, that means that Yehuda's portion didn't come here at all. But why is it, and why is it so important that the Mizbeach cannot be on the portion of Yehuda, and it has to be on the portion of Binyamin? So let's explain that concept by first going through another point, 
and that is in the third Beis HaMikdash. There'll be two or perhaps three differences in the Mizbeach. Two differences, certain. One of them is that the site, instead of going up, one Amma is going to go up two Amas. A second thing is that the site is going to go all around because in the third base of Mikdash, the way that the Eretz Yisrael is going to be split is going to be different. And therefore, the base of Mikdash is not going to be in anyone's portion. So there's not going to be any reason why the site can't go all the way around. Interesting that two out of the three and the third one, not everyone agrees to. And that is that according to Rashi's opinion, the Mizbeach in the third Beis HaMikdash is actually 11 Amasai instead of 10 Amasai. The Rambam definitely doesn't hold that. The Taishwit Yom Tev doesn't hold that. They say they learned the Pasuk differently and they say that it's 10 Amasai. But the two differences which we mentioned before is the Yisait. Why and what is the importance of those differences? Let's examine something very interesting in the Beis HaMikdash. For those of you who are a little bit familiar with Kabbalah or Chassidus, with the way images work in the 10 spiritus, the 10 spiritus are like triangles. So when we have, for example, the top triangle is Keser, Chachma, and Bina. Keser on top, the top dot, and then Chachma on the right side, Bina on the left side. The next triangle is Chesed, Gvura, and Tiferes. Chesed on the right, Gvura on the left, Tiferes down and in the middle. The next triangle is Netzach, Haid, and Yisoyed. And then there's below them, there's Malchus. What are these 10 spirits? The 10 spirits are channels that channel the godly energy into the world. The Beis Amikdash, the purpose and the point of the Beis Amikdash was to channel godly energy into the world and to enable us to serve God. Two ideas, and we spoke about that in the first lesson, that there's actually two points, bringing Hashem's energy into the world, but also elevating and lifting up the physical world. We mentioned that according to the Rambam, the main point is lifting up the physical world, but there's also the idea of drawing godliness down into the world. Now, the way it worked in the Beis HaMikdash, is the exact same way as the 10 spirits. Look all the way inside, on the back, on the west, is the Kaidash HaKadashim, the Holy of Holies, you have the Aren. In the Aren, there's the Luchais. The Luchais are handwritten, hand engraved by the Almighty Himself. That's the idea of Keser, the essence. The engraving in stone, that's the concept of Keser. The wisdom, the Taira that's inside the Aren is Chachma. And then the Aren itself, the Ark, which is encases the Torah, is like Bina, understanding that encases wisdom and, and draws it down into a case, into a vessel. Then you have a Paroiches. You have a curtain. The curtain is the, the block in between. That's like the Tzimtzum condensing the light as it goes further out into the next level. The next level... You have the Menorah on the right, that's Chesed. The Menorah was to draw down light into the world. The Shulchan on the left is Buddha. That's where you can lift up the Lechem upon him, the showbread that you put onto the Shulchan. That's lifting up the physical world. That's the concept of Buddha. Further out and in between them, further out is the Mizbeach, the golden Mizbeach, which is Tiferes. Tiferes connects both together. That's the Mizbeach of the Ketores. Ketores is connection. That is Tiferes. Then you go out of the Heichel. There's a door where you go out of the Heichel. That's the next set, the next triangle. As you go into the Ulam, the hallway, on your right and on your left, you have two tables. One table on the right, one table on the left. One of them is marble, one of them is gold. That's Netzach and Hoyt. And then you have the, the uh, golden vine that's on the doorway of the Heichel. And in fact, that golden vine would produce fruit. It would produce golden fruit. In the Yerushalmi, it says Shleim HaMelech was the wisest of all people. And he figured out a way to plant a golden vine that produces golden fruit. In addition to that, 
people would also donate and bring either a, a cluster of grapes, of golden grapes, or a leaf, or a grape, etc., etc., which means that the idea of Yisoy, Yisoy is something which bears fruit. The Mizbeach itself is Malchus. Let's look and let's examine the idea of the Mizbeach, which is Malchus. Malchus means to lift up the physical world. The Mizbeach is called Toirev. Toirev means it grabs physicality and it elevates it and lifts it up to Hashem. That's what the purpose of the Mizbech, and that's in fact the most important part of the Beis HaMikdash. But in the Mizbech, you had two aspects. There was the Karbanis that they brought on top of the Mizbech, which were consumed by the fire of the Mizbech. They went up, that's lifting up, and it wasn't just the actual animal or the actual flower or the actual oil that was brought on the Mizbech that was lifted up, it was the concept of lifting up all of the entire species of the living species of the person who brings it. If the person bringing his own animal soul and lifting it up, it, should be, it becomes consumed in the fire of holiness and becomes elevated and lifts up in that way the world to Hashem. And that's why it's on the outside, it's not in the inside. Malchus is on the outside. Malchus is the idea of dealing with the physical world on its own. Inside, we're dealing more with the spirituality and with the spiritual energy, as we'll learn when we learn more about the Benoira, etc. Outside, we're dealing with the actual physical world, elevating the physical world. However, in order to elevate the physical world, one has to have also to draw down from above. And that's why together with the Karbanas, they also brought Nisachim, they also poured wine and Unsukis, in addition to the wine, also water into the Mizbeach. Under the Mizbeach, we mentioned there was what was called the Shisim. They were very large tunnels that went according to the Gemara and the Medrash and the Zayar. They go down till the very depth, the very bowels of the earth. And that's the idea of drawing down and bringing down till the very bottom of where the depth of where everything is. In fact, we're told that when the Pasuk says Bereshis, the word Bereshis, God created the world, means Barashis. From the very beginning of creation, Hashem created the shis. He created this tunnel under the Mizbech because this is what it's all about. It's not only about elevating, it's about drying down also. Now, if we look at the Mizbech, where was this? Where was the shis? And it was under the site, the foundation of the Mizbech. In fact, the blood of the animals would be poured into the site of the Mizbech. And the, the kronos, the, the wine which was poured into them, they went down into the foundation, into the estate, and from there they went to the very depth of the earth. That's the idea of drying down. In the Mizbeach, we have two aspects. There's elevating, but you can't elevate the physical world on your own. You need to have the power for it. Binyamin is the spirit of Malchus, but Binyamin is called a tzaddik. Sadik Tachtoin, he has, he draws and he connects to the highest spiritual level, and this way he's able to elevate the world. There is an amazing concept. The Rebbe's father, Rabbi Levi Yitzchak, when he was sitting in Britain in, in exile, he had a Sefer Azoyar. The Rebbe made for him ink out of grass. And he would write on the uh, on the on the sides of his Sefer Azayar, he would write little notes. And these notes were later printed. And uh, one of the notes, a very interesting and deep scholarly note about the Mizbeach, where he explains it according to Kabbalah and according to Allah. And the idea that he explains is why was the site missing in this area? Yisaid is Yosef. Yosef and Binyamin are two brothers that are always together. Yosef is called a tzaddik. El Yon Yosef is the one who draws down, and that's why he's the bit of Yisaid. Yisaid means that which draws down godly energy into the lowest part of the world. In order for a Mizbech to be a Mizbech, it needs a Yisaid. 
The rest, Yehuda, the whole idea of Yehuda, we know that in, in, in present time, in the time of Galus, Yehuda, Yosef is over Yehuda because Yosef draws down godly energy. Yehuda is the idea of Malchus of elevating the world. In the portion of Yehuda, there can't be a Yisoyed of the Mizbeach because in order to elevate the world now, we need to have the power of Yosef, which is drawn through Binyamin, who's the brother of Yosef. Without that, you can't have it. When Mashiach comes in the third base of Mikdash, even though it's true that the portions will be different then, but there's another reason why the Yisoyed will be able to go all around. Because at that time, in the time of Mashiach, will be able without having to have the, will be a Yehuda himself, the kingship will belong to Yehuda. Mashiach comes from Yehuda and therefore the world itself will be elevated, the physical world itself. Now we can't do that on its own. And that's why now you need to have Binyamin and Binyamin, which is the Mizbeach itself, which is Malchus, but the way the Yisai, the way it's drawn down, the way we draw down from the highest to the lowest. When Mashiach comes, the Yisait will actually be higher. It's going to be a Tu'ama Yisait. It's going to be a Yisait which is going to be able to go all around. The idea of the Mizbeach in the time of Mashiach is a Mizbeach that enables and that's able to elevate the physical world itself to, re to realize and to reveal it in today's day, even though the Beis Amikdash elevates the world and the Beis Amikdash takes the entire physicality and elevates it in the fire to Hashem, but it can't, it doesn't yet have the power to reveal the essence of godliness that's in the world itself. When Mashiach comes, that's going to be able to be revealed, and that's why when Mashiach comes, that aspect in the Mizbeach, that's why the Taisvis Yamtev, in his explanation to uh, to uh, the third base of Mikdash, he says that when we say in Musaf of Rosh Chaydash, we say Mizbeach Chadash in Tachin, you should establish a new Mizbeach in Tzion. What is the meaning of a new Mizbeach? That it's a new Mizbeach that didn't exist before, meaning it's different than the second base of Mikdash, although in many aspects it's the same. But the difference is, is in the fact that in the third base of Mikdash, it will be a Mizbeach Chadash. It's going to be a Mizbeach that's going to have a Yisai from all sides. And in fact, that's something interesting that the Rebbe points out that on the Mizbeach, the inner Mizbeach, they didn't have a fire. When they had to light the Ktoires and make the fire in the inner Mizbeach, you needed to take the fire from the outer Mizbeach. And that's also something that even now, even though the inner Mizbeach is the Neshama itself, in order for the Neshama to serve Hashem with a fire, that fire has to come from the physical world, from the lack, from the fact that we feel a distance from Hashem. Once you get to the outer Mizbeach and a person deals with sacrificing, with offering his animal soul, that inspires and gives him the fire for the Ketoides, for the essential connection to Hashem that comes from the outer Mizbeach. Okay, so tomorrow, please God, will hopefully have electricity and we'll uh, show then the Menorah, the Menorah and the Shulchan.